Hi everyone, I'm Ben and you're watching The Snecker Show. If you watch my full tutorial on how to build these cheese and cracker serving trays, you may have been left wondering how to build the actual jig that's used for marking the boards and then template routing them. We're about to get into great detail on that, so stay tuned. I'm also going to make a few improvements to this model in the process because there are some things about it that I didn't like. Namely, the jig is too tall, the slots for these screws are too narrow, and these guide boards on the bottom are too short. First, on the depth of the template, this is two layers of half inch thick MDF. And the reason it's two layers, making it a total of one inch thick, is because I started with one layer of half inch MDF, and I was using this router bit. This is a white side bowl and tray bit. I'll put a link to it in the video description. My initial cut was going to have to be too deep to maintain contact between the bearing and the template. So I added an extra layer and that worked out fine. I didn't have any three quarter inch at the time, so I just used two layers of half inch. Now this worked okay, but the problem with that is that the, the farther down I go with this router bit, the more likely the router collet is going to contact the top of the template. So this is actually a little bit thicker than I want it to be. The ideal thickness would be three quarter of an inch for this router bit. You can see I only need to make a very shallow first cut to maintain contact between the bearing and the template. Now if you're using a different router bit, maybe a little deeper one like this, uh, this pattern bit, you might actually want a one inch thick template. So modify the template based on which router bit you're going to use. I would recommend this one. Next on the ledge for the screws, I used a number eight screw with a number eight washer. But as you can see, the MDF crushed pretty easily under the pressure from the screw. So it quickly damaged the ledge. What I'm going to do for the remake is use a number eight fender washer instead, and then I'll make the ledge for the slot three quarters of an inch instead of three eighths of an inch. For these guides on the side, the reason they're this length and not longer is because I was being cheap and I found a piece of wood that was about the right size and I cut it in half. It looked like it would have been fine considering the size of the inside cutout, but what I wasn't considering is that when I slide the template down this way to route out around the handle, the distance between the support guide and the router bit was too far, and that allowed a kickback on one occasion, which I would like to avoid in the remake. The original was made out of MDF, but I'm going to make the replacement out of Baltic birch plywood. This is harder, it's going to last longer, and I'm a woodworker, so I like making nice looking and functional things out of wood. For one time use, or even multiple uses, MDF is going to work fine, and I might even use something like OSB or Flakeboard for just making a one time template. But since I intend to use this template multiple times in the future, I'm going to pick something that I want to hang up on the wall in my workshop. Just to clarify one thing about this template, because it could lead to confusion, is that the areas marked in red are the only parts that really matter for the functionality of the template. Once you get into the black marker, you're already off of the piece of wood that you're cutting, so the router bit won't contact anything. This uh, little OG on the end here doesn't really mean anything, that's just how I cut it. Most of the cuts for making this template are pretty simple and straightforward. Got some curves on the outside, some straight lines. Uh, the main trick is getting this line straight on the inside, because if, if that's wavy, it's going to show up on the thin walls of the finished product. And there are a lot of different ways to do this, and very few of them are wrong. And now to carefully raise the blade up into the template. Except for that one, that one's definitely wrong. But we're going to take the easy route and just make a template to make our template. So grab yourself some scrap wood. I left four inches on this one, but I think that three is plenty, and that's also about how much wood I have on this piece of scrap to cut it for both ends. Looks like I went around two and three quarter on the compass for the original, and it's going to be the same curve for the inside and the outside on both ends. I put some lines on here for clarity, and now we're going to cut this piece right here to make the two ends of the middle of the template. 
And I got the middle of this board marked, so I'll just start with my first arc with the compass set to two and three quarters of an inch. Right around there. And then I'm going to move back three inches. And I'll make the next arc there. And now we have that first piece. We got this end of the template figured out, and now we just need to do the handle side. And we're going to make this pretty easy, I hope. The handle doesn't need to be any special measurement or shape. It just needs to be comfortable for whoever's holding it. Now, I have slightly larger than normal hands, so I went with five inches for mine, and I think that's going to be fine for most people. So if you make that five inches long, it should be okay. And we're going to capitalize on the fact that we already have the compass set up at two and three quarters of an inch for making these curves. We'll make these curves first. So grab yourself a sheet of white paper and fold it lengthwise down the middle. Doesn't need to be perfect, just needs to be a straight crease in the middle. And then we're going to mark down here five inches from the top, five or so. And then I'll make a curve here. And then come down about three inches or four, three or four. You don't want to go much lower than three because it's going to affect the ledge that the router is sitting on. So I'm going to go three inches because that's about how much wood I have. Again, building a template based on the scrap wood that I had on hand. And there's the bottom curve. All right, so we got this part right here figured out. And now we got to draw the handle. Now this is about inch and five eighths there and inch and a quarter there. It doesn't have to be exactly that. Again, it just needs to be comfortable. But if we're to go with inch and five eighths, because I wanted to make it complicated, we'll, we'll divide that in half and say that our, our radius is going to be 13 sixteenths on the compass. And that is one more sixteenth than three quarters. So right around there. And then draw a circle at the top. Or at least most of a circle. And mark that center point. Just make sure you don't lose it. You want to remember that it's there. Because uh, I didn't do this last time, but I think I should have put a hole in the end of these because it makes it a little bit easier to store them if you can slide them all onto a hook. Uh, just, you know, whoever you give it to, it just gives them the option of, of hanging them up on a, on a peg or something. So we got inch and five eighths uh, diameter circle here. And now for the inch and a quarter, we will set the compass to five eighths of an inch. And you don't need to draw a circle here, you just got to mark mark those shoulders so that you can draw a straight line between these two. And there we go, we got the handle. You don't need to worry about drawing a curve on here yet because your template routing bit is going to take care of that for you. Now you don't need to cut exactly on these lines, but I'm just going to cut a little bit of the extra waste out right there on the bottom. And that's just so I can see where my line is on either end where I crease the paper. And that'll make it easier to line it up on here when I use some spray adhesive to stick that in place. Oh, now I can cut that out on the scroll saw.
This is probably a good time to drill that hole out. You don't have to use it, but it's nice to have it in the template. I drilled the hole to half of an inch, but then I remembered that the bearings on my roundover bits are half of an inch, so I'm going to bump that up to 5 eighths. You could also go with 3 quarters. The original was around 10 and 7 eighths on the inside at the longest point. So I put some marks on here to get approximately that measurement. And now I'm just going to put these together using some super glue. And while that's setting up, I'm just going to extend those lines so that I can cut off the excess after the glue dries. And once again, because this part out here is not going to actually have contact with the router bit at any point, I'm not going to worry about trying to make this curve too round on the outside. I'll just cut in here to make it a little bit easier. Old scroll saw. Now that the template template is done, I can transfer it to this piece of Baltic birch plywood for the final version. And I have another piece of plywood here which is going to be used to make the guides for the bottom.
I'm about to use a flush trim bit in the router table to make the new template match the template template. And whichever router bit that you choose for this step is going to determine the radii in the corners. So for if I use a three quarter of an inch radius bit, it's gonna give me a three eighths of an inch radius in the corner. Now I just noticed that when I did the original, when I added my second layer to that first template, I used a three quarter of an inch bit to make that template. And then when I actually routed the serving trays, I used a one inch bit, which is the one that's in here right now. And that's a, uh, the half inch radius right there. That's the three eighths radius on the inside. It's not enough that I think it's gonna make a real difference. So just for simplicity, I'm going to use the one inch diameter router bit, the same one that I use for routing the trays to route out the template. And that way the profile that's gonna be seen in all the corners on this template is going to match exactly what will be seen in the finished product. Router table kickbacks can obviously happen very quickly, and I'm glad I caught that one on camera because it let me go back and analyze it in slow motion to figure out what happened. This is now the second time that I've had a kickback in the exact same location when I was using this bit and this template, but the last time it happened, it was with a piece of ash, uh, so solid wood with the grain running this way, and it kicked back in the exact same spot. Uh, this time it was plywood, so I figured it probably wasn't just from grain direction because plywood has the, the grain going in both directions all the time anyway. I don't know if you caught it, but what actually happened here was as I was coming around this, this corner, uh, I wanted to move my fingers out of the way because that's not a good place for fingers to be. And, um, and there was a little bit of extra wood right here that hadn't been cut on the other side of the handle. So there was uh, the the template was not engaged with the bearing. I pulled it back a little bit and I stopped actively pushing into the bit so that I could reposition my hand. And when I did that, I think that I, I just turned the board just enough that it was able to engage the bit again on that extra wood that was sticking out and threw it off to the side. Now, I think that there is something that could be done with this template to, uh, to reduce the risk of that happening in the future. And it'll make this a little bit safer and it will also, I think, reduce sanding. It'll make the cut smoother because you'll be cutting in the, in the same direction on both passes. We'll see if I get that put into this version, but uh, if not, just make sure that when you're rounding this corner, step back, reposition your fingers, and then re-engage and try to take that cut nice and slowly. And that'll, that'll uh, avoid the risk of kicking back or reduce it anyway. I pulled this piece off of the template and cleaned up the leftover double-sided tape residue with mineral spirits. And now the next step is to cut these, these guides on the bottom that are used to clamp the workpiece in place while you're template routing it. And these just need to stick out from the side a little bit uh, so that you can get the clamp on there without actually hitting the template itself. You gotta clamp down on that piece of wood that you're cutting. And the way to get that measurement is to, uh, to put the piece of wood on there that you're gonna use for the trays. In this case, mine are about two and five eighths of an inch wide. Now, if I measure both sides of that, I have about an inch and five eighths. So if I go an inch and three quarters, or if I go two inches, either one is gonna be fine. It just has to stick out from the side enough to get a clamp on it. Uh, if you're gonna do a lot of different sizes, you would wanna make it larger, but uh, I, I'm gonna stick with this approximate size for these if I make any more. So I think that inch and three quarters should be fine. Did 
To drill out the slots for these screws, I made a mark about two inches in from the, the shoulder here on both ends, and then I marked it across with a square, and then I measured in five eighths and seven eighths, and that's gonna get me roughly around the center of this board when I have a piece of wood clamped in there. And this could be wider, or it could be narrower, depending on how much uh, adjustment you wanna have in, in these boards. I have about a half of an inch here, and I think that was too much. I'm just gonna stick with a quarter of an inch here, and that should be fine, maybe a little bit more. And I will do that on the drill press. And to get rid of the waste in the middle, I am just going to go down slowly and move it back and forth along my stop block. I switched over to a three quarter of an inch Forstner bit to do the counter bore that will let this screw and washer sit below the surface. And if you don't have a Forstner bit, you can also do this with a router bit, uh, maybe a handheld router and a straight edge guide. And uh, I also switched over to number 10 screws instead of number eight. It's a little bit bigger. Only reason I did that is because I didn't have any number eight screws that were inch and a quarter. They were all inch and a half. And because I'm using two layers of three quarter inch this time, instead of a, a one inch layer and three quarter of an inch layer, an uh, inch and a half would have gone through the bottom. So using number 10 screws, fortunately the holes that I drilled were just big enough that that's going to fit. And I can still use the three quarter of an inch counter bore on top. Barely hitting. Just right. I'm just going to chisel out that little bit right there so it doesn't get torn out on the drill press. I clamped the top onto one of the guide boards at its approximate location just so I can mark where that horizontal line is going to be for drilling. You want to drill those guides on the bottom so you're roughly in the center of that slot with the screw uh, based on the width of the board that you plan on making these trays out of. And that's going to differ from yours and from mine, so I'm not going to give an exact measurement because I don't even know what that measurement is. I just lined everything up on here approximately, and the worst case, if, uh, if this hole is a little bit off and if I want to go a little bit wider or narrower, I can either rip these strips a little bit narrower or just glue a piece on there or rip a new one all together. So, this part isn't a big deal, just try to get it close. I 
I got everything sanded and assembled. I mostly just wanted to round over these sharp corners on the Baltic birch plywood. And uh, the next step is going to be to give it a single coat of, uh, of polyurethane. I'm just going to wipe it on and wipe it off, just like you would with a penetrating oil finish. It's going to soak in great to this Baltic birch, and it'll offer a little bit of protection. Uh, a lot of people like to use wax on their woodworking jigs, but there are jigs that you want to slide, and there are jigs that you want to stick. This is a jig that you want to stick. Uh, when you're holding a piece of wood inside here, uh, you don't want any of this to be slippery especially on the inside here, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to allow that board to slide back and forth while you're doing template routing. If you use polyurethane, you still get the protection, but you don't uh, have the problem with the, the slipperiness that wax will give you. Now, if you want to wax the top of this later, because that's where your router is going to be running, that's fine. You would not need to wax the bottom, because this is not actually going to contact the top of your router table, because there's going to be a piece of wood under there that will hold it elevated slightly. So. I would recommend uh, wiping on a coat of polyurethane and then just wiping it off. It'll be dry by the morning. I got the polyurethane added and let it dry overnight. And then I came back in the morning and sanded everything with some 320 grit to get it nice and smooth. And it's a good thing that I did that instead of uploading this video as I originally intended because I forgot some configuration steps. You see, I built this thing two years ago. And when people started asking for instructions on making the template, I thought, well, I just put up that whole video showing how to use it start to finish. But uh, no, in fact, I did not show how to use it start from finish. Uh, when I pulled this thing off the wall and started preparing to make this video, there was a lot of stuff that I didn't remember about how I made it, and a couple little subtle details that'll make it a lot easier to use, such as these little markings around the bottom. Well, let's go over that now. The first step is to put two marks on the bottom center of your template, one here and one there. And I measured mine with calipers, and then I verified it, and then I verified it again, and once I was entirely sure that these marks were exactly in the center, I made a mark in the corner with a sharp knife. Did the same on the other end. And then I came back later with a fine point a waterproof pen and darkened it up a little so that I can see it when the template is turned over. And that's going to make sure that it doesn't wash off or rub off as your template routing. Now, the reason for that step is that once you get your project board marked in the center and you're aligning the guides on the bottom of your jig, you can set this on there and use those two marks on the end to line up on the board before you tighten those screws down. The sides of this board are not very wide, so if you're a little bit wider on one side than another, or even worse, if you're twisted, it's really going to show up in your project piece. So it's very important to make sure that everything is aligned dead center. Next, use a square to make two lines across this board, 5 eighths of an inch apart. And that's going to determine the size of this piece right here. You can go larger or smaller, you're just going to have to adjust your other measurements accordingly. Slide the template up to the first line, and draw an arc. Slide the inside of the template up to the second line, and mark the inside. Measure up another 5 eighths of an inch, and put a line across this board. If you did a different measurement down here, make sure it's the same distance here. And once that line is marked, you put your template back on and slide it down until you would imagine that this curve, if it were to continue through there, would be right on that line. I penciled it in here just to make it easier to see. And once you get that right, draw the shoulders. Don't draw the whole handle yet. Take the template off and make sure that this spacing looks like it's just about right. If not, erase it and try again. If it's good, put the template back on. And draw the rest of the handle. Once you're completely satisfied with the placement of the handle and the spacing on this end of the jig, don't move anything. Go back to those first two lines that you drew, 5 eighths of an inch apart, or whatever you used, and make a mark on your template using a knife and a waterproof pen so they don't rub off with use. This is going to make it much easier to set up your jig in the future, because all you have to do with the new board is mark two lines 5 eighths of an inch apart, slide the end of the template up to the first line, mark the curve, slide the inside of the template up to the second line, mark the inside, slide these two marks back to those first two lines, and mark out the handle. Your jig is now configured and ready to use. Now, as far as the scope of this video, I wanted to make these slots wider, and I did. Uh, I wanted to make this jig shorter, and I did. And I wanted to make these guide boards on the bottom longer, 
and I did. And I also wanted to get into some other stuff that popped up in the middle of the video, which are some safety upgrades. And that is not going to be included in this version just because it's getting pretty close to Christmas. And I would rather get this out now in case somebody wants to do something with it than to wait another three or four weeks and, and uh, get this released in January after the presents uh, are already delivered. So this is just a, an early version and I will do another one later. I have already started working on it, so stay tuned for that. I have a few ideas for safety upgrades, but in the meantime, you know, just to be careful when you're rounding that corner right there, because this is the main place that it's going to kick on you, is, uh, is rounding that turn. So uh, hopefully this is, uh, this is time for some awesome Christmas presents. If you make something out of it, make sure you post some pictures down in the comments. If you have ideas for improvements to the jig, feel free to post those as well, and maybe I'll get it incorporated into the next one. So um, good luck, have a, have a great holiday season, and thanks for watching.